This month marks 20 years since the day a five-year-old Cuban boy was found clinging to an inner tube three miles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. Elian Gonzalez was rescued, but his mother and 11 others drowned in their effort to come to the United States from Cuba. South Florida and the country followed closely what happened with him over the next several months. Tonight, NBC6 reporter Natalia Ortiz with one man's recollection of one of the most iconic moments of the five-month-long saga. It was the fastest federal search warrant to be executed in U.S. history. In less than two minutes, federal agents removed then six-year-old Elian Gonzalez from his family's little Havana home. Jim Goldman was the federal agent in charge of the operation. Tell me what goes through your mind when you see this picture. The picture that captured the hearts and minds of the American population uh, is a true professional that did an outstanding job. He did what he was assigned to do. He did it in a perfect manner. That this officer is the essence of professionalism. Goldman, who at the time was director of investigations for the INS's Miami district, reported directly to then Attorney General Janet Reno. Up against the barrier now! He says the operational plan took about a month to develop and involved about 250 agents. But he says this is a photo that should not have happened. I would recommend that no civilian, particularly a photographer holding a metallic object, jump up in front of a team of law enforcement officers while they're executing a search warrant for the sole purpose of getting a picture. That could have been a tipping point. After the most challenging part of the operation ended without anyone firing a weapon, Elian Gonzalez was wrapped in a blanket and swiftly carried out by a female agent to one of three vans. The other two served as decoys. Her role and responsibility that evening was to take possession of Elian and kind of nurture him almost in a motherly way. What was she instructed to say to Elian in that moment? She was instructed to um, speak to him in a very calm manner in his native language, Spanish, and to ensure him that we were there to help him. The boy, who'd become the center of a political and family custody battle, sparking heated protests in Miami and garnering national attention, was taken on a helicopter ride from the front door of the Little Havana home, where he lived for six months, to Watson Island. He was clearly fascinated by the helicopter ride. Um, who wouldn't be? He was then placed on a jet headed to Andrews Air Force Base in D.C. There, Goldman personally handed Elian to his father, Juan Miguel. Describe the scene that you saw when Elian arrived to Washington and was reunited with his father. The father and son embraced um, for a significant amount of time. Uh, both of them were, were, were crying. Both of them were clearly um, excited to see one another. Almost two decades after the operation, Goldman shares his opinion on one of the issues that has most bitterly divided Miami. I don't think anything should ever stand between a father and a son under any circumstance, under any political theory or uh, condition. Goldman has since retired from law enforcement and opened a private detective agency and says he'd like to see Elian again. What would you tell Elian Gonzalez if you were in front of you right now? I would like to congratulate him for his maturity that uh, he demonstrated the night of the uh, uh, rescue and recovery operation. And uh, I would like to uh, know him better as a uh, now a 26-year-old young man. I think that we would have a lot to talk about. After Elian Gonzalez returned to Cuba, he became a prominent figure in the Castro regime. His cousin, Maris Lacy's Gonzalez, who became his primary guardian and advocate in the U.S., declined our request to participate in the interview. In the newsroom, Natalia Ortiz, NBC6 News.